Hi again then guys and welcome to another look back to the past of the Forza franchise, to Forza 4 in particular once again, and this is a car which, although we haven't specifically reviewed it before, I have definitely referenced it before on the channel, I've done other videos about it, being it just driving in action, or I included it in the top 20 cars that I believe deserve to return to the franchise, and if I recall correctly, I believe the video that I did covering the leaked images of cars that could well be coming back actually included this one. I'm pretty sure it was one of the cars there. So I'm chuffed about that. I'm glad to see that it could potentially be coming back. I'd be even happier if Mosla was <laughs> as well, because it's an excellent car. But I think the Ascari, even on its own, if the Gumput doesn't come back, if the Mosla doesn't, this is still an excellent representation of those technically road legal, but really track focused supercars go. Because for those who maybe are unfamiliar with the car, maybe you haven't heard of Ascari, I mean, chances are you probably have, but if you haven't and you don't know what you're getting into with this one, well, basically what you've got, in essence, is a car which, unlike the Gumper Apollo and unlike the Mosler, takes an existing car and then turns it into a track-focused supercar. Whereas if you think about it, the Gumper Apollo and the Mosler were both track-going supercars from day one. The Ascari KZ1R edition, which is this car, was not. It originated with the KZ1, which is actually a supercar that's more on the level of something like a Spyker C8 or an Aston Martin Vanquish. That more exclusive, you could say overpriced, but more kind of a boutique approach, a luxury supercar, if you will, but still a very fast one. BMW powered, around 500 horsepower, 200 miles per hour, kind of a quintessential early 2000s supercar great looking, ultra rare, a really good all-rounder, but not necessarily the kind of thing that you take up against a Gumpert anytime soon. Now my personal favourite Ascari, of course, is the A10. I featured that one in my top 50 favourites countdown for good reason, it's brutal, it's raw, but at the same time, just like a Maserati MC12, it's gorgeous. It proves that you don't have to be this ridiculously unforgiving track-going supercar to be effective. Was it slower than the Gumper around the Top Gear track? Yes, it was, but not by much. It's only about 0.2 of a second. And the difference between the Ascari and the Gumper is that the Gumper is a total professional machine, which is almost not forgiving at all. Whereas the Ascari, it's brutal, yes, but it's not really the kind of car that gives you the impression that it's difficult to use. Almost like a, a Mitsubishi Evo. Is it brutal? Yes. But it's also surprisingly forgiving. A Subaru Impreza as well is another perfect example. Now this one is not quite as raw for sure as the A10, at least not in its standard form. It's got over 100 horsepower less with 521 horsepower. Again, it's from that BMW sourced V8 engine, just under five liters. You're looking at just under 400 pound feet of torque, which is pretty good for a naturally aspirated engine. No supercharger, no turbos. And being as this one is essentially a road homologated race car, in effect, it's not too heavy either. It weighs 1,350 kilos, which is similar to a GT3 car, for good reason. And the horsepower per tonne, although not quite as high as you might expect at 386, is not bad. Not for a car that has as much power as this one does. Because let's be honest, 521 horsepower doesn't sound that great for a supercar these days. But when you then think of the fact that the Mosler MT900 also only has 530, which isn't that much more than this one, and look at what that car can do. It's a very similar kind of vehicle. But the difference that I was alluding to earlier between those is that the Gumper from its inception was this hardcore, brutal, professional level, track going supercar, some might say hypercar even. The Mosla, likewise, it's not as brutal and it's a lot more forgiving and incredibly competitive. The Mosla was a dominant force in racing, but it's still a track supercar from day one. Even before the MT900 came along, its predecessors like the Consulier and the Raptor, they were also these track focused machines. Now, the difference with the Ascari is because its roots come from not just racing, it is race bred for sure, but because its roots come from that initial luxury approach to a supercar, it has the advantage that yes, it's track focused, but it's also smoother, it's more exotic rather than brutal, and there is a big difference between the two. And although that may mean that it's not quite as fast sometimes, 
it means that I personally would say at least it's a lot more forgiving and a lot more enjoyable to get a great lap out of the Ascari. Now, I personally love the Mosler the most out of the three easily. It's one of my favourite cars as well. But the Ascari is such a pleasure to use. And one of the things in particular which is really great about it, if you look at the car from the side, it shares something in common with a lot of great Ferraris, including the 458, the 488, and the Enzo. And that is, if you look at the side profile of a Ferrari, they are mid-engined, and yet, if you look at where the bumpers end in relation to the axles, or the wheels, you'll notice there's a lot more overhang over the front end of the car than there is over the back. That may not seem like an important thing, but it makes a huge difference to how a car handles. If you look at the Maserati MC12, for instance, you've got a huge amount of rear overhang. If you look at the Volkswagen Nardo, again, a lot of overhang. The Salina 7 a lot of overhang at the back. That makes them very stable at high speed. But at low speeds, they can sometimes feel a bit cumbersome. With something like the Enzo, for instance, on the other hand, which has the short back end and a longer overhang at the front, the 458, the 488, and this Ascari, you've got a very stubby back end and a very long front end in comparison to the back. And that actually allows the car and its turn in circle, the turn into corners, to feel much more nimble. Now the Gumpert, for instance, is somewhere in between. So is the Mosler. The Mosler has about equal front and back, and the Gumpert does as well, and they do, as a result of that, feel fairly neutral. So it's very interesting to see how the positioning of bodywork in terms of overhang from the front and the back in particular, can completely change how a car handles. And it's not just about that, of course, but that is a big player, a big playing factor in the aero of the car, the way the car feels through corners, and the Ascari has that. It's got the longer nose, the shorter tail, and that allows it to feel much lighter and much more nimble than it actually is. And something else that I like about the car as well is that the feel of the vehicle, the way it carries its weight and the engine itself, that gruff, burbly BMW V8, it gives the car this feeling of just muscle. It feels like it's got this burbling power. Even though it doesn't have anywhere near as much power as the Gumper, it still feels like it could take it on. And with a little bit of tuning, it definitely can. So for 350 grand, you get a car which is not just a race car for the road, pretty much literally speaking, but it's also only in the S class, because due to the power being so low, it's no way near the height of a Gumper or the Mosler even, in terms of its category, S class 626 Pi. So you can easily tune it up to be a dominant force in that category. And it's certainly a car which if you haven't tried it, is an excellent alternative to those rivals and one which I think offers a refreshingly different approach to the idea of a hardcore track-going supercar. So it was definitely worth a look, and that's it for this pick. So of course, I'll see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.